You look terrible. Why don't you eat? Why don't you the rest of all in a month from now, this Hollywood big shot's gonna give you what you want. It's too late. They start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it appears spite is in the air as the the peers of the distinguished competition have come for D- DC Comics and decided to, to bring pitchforks in hand and start attacking their decision to leave uh, Diamond Comics distributors for new pastures as far as Lunar and UCS. And here to talk with me about all this and, and the uh, the oddity of it all is my good friend Perch. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. And odd is the right word. Absolutely. We've seen Marvel kind of come out with... Um, I would call it middle school hijinks as far as the way that they're going to come back at DC for, for leaving D, uh, D- Diamond Comics. And then uh, Image Comics publisher Eric Stevenson has, has went a little bit further, and in, in, uh, there's a lot of weird stuff. We're, we'll talk about the Marvel thing first. So yep. Marvel, of course, is well known for their variant cover program. Tons of variant covers really putting uh, um, a lot of – Retailers in tough positions as far as, uh, you know, the 1 in 100, 1 in 500, even 1 in 1,000 variant covers and things like this. So they decided that, you know, to to come back at DC, they're going to make a new variant program. Retailers don't have to, to buy in for them or anything. They can just order them. And they just put, like, New Comics Wednesday on it with the most generic logo and pastel colors I've ever seen. I don't think this makes their point. It just looks like... It's an onion article. I, I mean, there's there's no other way to put it. it. The comic industry is struggling. People are trying to come back. Marvel's slowly kind of inching back to where they were. Storylines interrupted. Comics getting canceled. Stores closed. And this is this isn't. You would expect to see this news announcement out of the Onion or Babylon Bee or whatever the parody site is. This is so ridiculous on the sur. You can't make this up. Marvel, as you said, with their with their constant variant covers, decides the best way to 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 message this exact moment is to throw out more variant covers as cheaply as possible that they could put out. I mean, this is, this looks like an idea that was created during a zoom call between editors where they're like, Hey, how should we prank DC? And they come up with it. Middle school is right. It, it's, it's baffling and how stupid this is. Yeah. It's nuts. I don't have like a, a visual arts degree or anything, but I could recreate this. No problem. I could probably even make it look better by throwing a little texture or something on through the cover. Uh, but this is uh, they put the most minimal effort possible in making these lame variant covers. I can't imagine there any retailer actually wanting to buy these, even if they did want to tell Dime or DC Comics to fuck off. Well, I mean, exactly. I, I think there's no, there's nothing here that anyone wants, and it is, it, it is the least amount of effort they could do. And you can't simultaneously say, "Hey, we care about Wednesday. Wednesday is our day. It's New Comic Day, and we're so proud of it that we're going to put in zero effort." to throw uh, Ariel Black um, 72 point comic Wednesday on a pastel cover and vomit it out the other end. I mean, fuck you, Marvel, come on. Yeah, they couldn't even go out and get maybe a known uh, parody artist or just a good artist in general and, and maybe put some of their more marquee characters in a comic shop on Wednesday declaring that Wednesday is their new comic book day. You know, maybe Wolverine with an issue of a comic in a shop. You know, something cool like that that would uh, maybe Oh. Gener- garner a feeling from the readers or maybe even the retailers. Get Tom King or Chip Zdarsky to draw stick figures on there. I mean, anything, <laughs> anything would have been better than this. It's 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 just a, and it's tough too because I, I know some people have been commenting to to both of us. I think more me. I've been getting this of, of like, why do you guys love DC so much? You're giving DC all the praise. Why, why do you hate Marvel so much? So I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to pat Marvel on the back, man. I'm a Marvel person by and large. My comic collection is probably 75% Marvel. People may be surprised. I have a big X-Men guy like Doc. And so I really want to applaud them for some good moves and some news. And and you, you're making it too hard, Marvel. Come on. <laughs> you just you, this this cannot be your best idea. Yeah, as far as the the um the criticism goes. I criticize everyone equally. Obviously, Marvel is getting more of it right now because they're doing a much poorer job as far as the market goes. Well, and yeah. DC's making good decisions. But DC's decision on Detective Comics 1027 will be thoroughly roasted today and dumped on by yours truly. Yes, absolutely. And I did as well. That was you know a, a, another another anniversary. We, we all say that for your video. But yeah, 
there's plenty of dumb decisions. And a lot of the things DC is doing, we may look back on a year from now and go, yeah, that was stupid. What were you thinking? And in fact, we'll get into it with Eric Stevenson, but but how DC rolled it out with very little notice to retailers and, and Diamond 2, I think was lousy. That was a bad decision. So it's not... I like you. I like to think that I'm I'm even handed about all this stuff, and I definitely try and be. But I mean, come on, Marvel, you gotta you gotta do better than this. This <laughs> this is not. You're not making it easy for us to to try and and come to the table for you. It's it's so shitty. Yeah, just to wrap that one up, I think Heidi McDonald from the Beat, not my favorite writer, but she probably summed it up at what best when she admired their level of spite. Yeah, I mean. It comes across incredibly petty. If you're going to troll somebody, I mean, man, you can't you can't go to a, a meme generator somewhere and like toss out uh, the aliens guy saying you know Wednesday or something. I mean, there's not there's nothing better you could have done. It's it's spiteful. It seems petty, and it it seems like a uh, a response from the house of no ideas. Yeah, this is totally boring. So let's talk about Eric Stevenson over at Image Comics, a person that you and I have both. Uh, praised and admired the way that he has handled the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. I thought uh, Image probably had the best response initially. I think DC has, has outclassed him since then with the way that they've uh, made aggressive changes and addressed issues that were, were in the uh, the industry overall. But this is what he had to say. And there's a there's a lot of shade being thrown here. And I wouldn't even say it's even shade. Like, he's like, outright throwing you know pitchforks at, at DC Comics here. Uh, we're just going to talk about five of the statements because there's a ton to, to, to kind of uh, unpack here. There's definitely going to be a link to the article in the video description. If you want to read the entire uh, letter that he, that Image Comics sent out to their creators, and you definitely should because there, there's a lot in there. But here's the first statement. You've no doubt read their statement about how this move was intended to strengthen the marketplace, obviously talking about DC. Pardon the profanity, but that's bullshit. This is a hasty, sociopathic decision made by people who do not care about the long-term welfare of our marketplace, let alone comics. Now that, my friend, is a very uh, heavily, that is a heavy charge to throw at DC Comics for making a change. Yeah, I mean, uh, sociopathic, I, I mean, I, again, I don't think change comes when we exaggerate, whether it's world events or comics. Um, sociopathic, I mean, I, I, I just... Look, I, like I think the word selfish might have been appropriate there, but sure. sociopathic and like claims that they're like murderers or something. <laughs> yeah, that they're deliberately uh, taking delight in someone else's misery. I, I mean, DC is trying to protect their business. You may not like it and it may seem cold hearted and, and definitely it, it may tax some friendships and other things. But to go out like this, it's um, it, it, it. I mean, look, to wait when I read this, I thought, here's a guy that's pissed that he didn't do it first. Honestly. Uh, for all the, the high-minded comments about uh, you got to stick with us and this is bad for the industry and all the rest, he even goes. What's weird is he goes through some history, which partially explains why DC did exactly what they did, but but then kind of circle back to to want to crap on DC. And again, it, it makes it it makes it sound to me like here's a guy who who was pissed that DC got there first. Honestly, the words he's using don't fit the scenario that we're witnessing. And it definitely makes me think that um, Diamond Comics isn't as financially solvent as uh, he and Steve Jeppe and other people in the industry would like you to believe. And there is a, a tone of desperation in here. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, what's interesting in this document, and so you go on quite a journey through his uh, through his statement. So I do recommend people read it. And there is a section in here where he he lays some definite criticism that is the same criticism you and I have had which is uh, DC did this with very little notice. I mean, even he brings up Heroes World, which is a terrible analogy, but the, the accurate part he does say is that when Marvel bought Heroes World, they gave months of notice and a long time to kind of for people to switch. And I was a retailer at the time. I remember that moment very clearly. There was a, uh, a very clear transition period. You had time to do it. And I think it's an accurate statement to say that DC uh, definitely rushed this quite a bit. What nobody gets into is why. Um, it's kind of inferred that DC did this because they were spiteful or because they were just mean. They're bad people. But um, I, I think that, you know, I, I have a hard time buying that. There was a reason DC did this. I think it was concern over the viability of, of, of Diamond. I think they probably worried that it was going to collapse at any moment. So they were trying to move quickly. 
And again, nine months from now, you and I can both be sitting here going, that was clearly a bad move on their part. We may. I think Steven said had a point there, but the, but outside of that, he just goes over and over hammering things that are just just weird points. And and you're right, it, it, there's a lot of you you protest too much about how stable Diamond is. Uh, that's not the story other people in the coming the company have. I've got some people who've been messaging me saying they want to give some statements off the record about what they're seeing within Diamond. It's not good. So I, I just I don't buy this. It feels a little bit like desperation. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Lost in the, the ocean of hyperbole that is his letter to his creators are some very, very good points, especially about the transition and the, the lack of notice out to, to publishers, retailers about what DC was doing as far as moving distributors. They should have given more time. They certainly should have been better communication. But when you when you read this thing, everything else is just drowns it out in, in all the the. the the level of crap in there. And here's another one. There's there's one that I thought was just completely uh, self-unaware on, on Image Comics part. And this is in reference to the fallout from Heroes World. And he, he says it, to that, DC's response was to sign an exclusive with Diamond. That prompted Archie, Dark Horse, and Image to negotiate with both Diamond and Capital for exclusives. Diamond made the better offer. Why was it okay for, for Diamond or I'm sorry, for Image, in the middle of a, a fallout of Heroes World to go out and negotiate terms of service for the best distribution possible for their company. But DC Comics is no longer allowed to go out and negotiate and find the best terms of service for their company because now Diamond has an exclusive over the entire industry and a monopoly. Why can't D D uh, DC go out and negotiate terms, especially when they had a 60-day out and Diamond had broken terms of service? Well, I mean, exactly. I, I'd love to you know, grab somebody from Capital City and have them read this statement and say, what do you think of all this? Because that he, he brings up that history, which was true. They, you know, pardon expression, they fucked Capital City. It was, a, it was a viable company. And when they signed the exclusivity, which Diamond made the better offer, it basically put Capital City in a position where it had to be sold. Diamond wound up taking it out. In many cases, it took value away from that sale. So it took money out of people's pockets. It was a definite decision that was made. It didn't help, uh, you know, didn't help Capital City. Took them out. Didn't help the industry. And and it was it, he says it himself. They were negotiating. They were going down this period. So now in 2020, it's unacceptable for other people to do that. They just have to sit with the status quo and not try and negotiate a good deal. It's just it's it's hypocritical. And it's uh, yeah. I mean, you know. There's a lot in this in this talk uh, in this letter of his where he's promoting kind of image and they're creator friendly and other things. I would argue that a lot of their creators, or at least some of them, are also DC creators. What kind of position is he putting his people in, his loyal kind of creators who are who are working on comics, whether it's it's Snyder or others who have image books? They're basically reaming DC. What kind of position is it putting their creators in? They have people who are creating books for DC and Image right now. It's putting people in the middle. It's just, it's it's tone deaf, it's insensitive. And, and for all the comments about their respect for creators, they use the word creator a lot, they love comics and they, they empower creators. They did quite a bit to make a pretty uncomfortable situation for creators that work for them. Yeah, and it's all under the guise that this is happening during the, the COVID pandemic, as well as the, the current uh, protesting that's going on in the United States. While I agree these, these are obviously huge issues, the world essentially shut down for COVID-19. It felt like uh, almost all of America shut down for those protests. But are, are things never allowed to move forward? Is, is the world just stop forever? Yeah, I, I, I don't get the logic of the, you know DC, and, and whether you, you think it's a big family or not, they're a competitor. They're competing for the same marketplace, competing for the same dollar. Are we saying that there are certain conditions where people must stop competing, even if it works against their own business interest? I, that's not how the world works. I mean, maybe that's how we would like it to work in some kind of mass, you know, mystical fantasy land, but that's not how it actually works. Yeah, and then he goes on to take some kind of uh, some swipes at, at DC, which I think are probably unfair considering uh, Image's position in the industry has actually been been uh, decreasing as of late. And then he calls them still a distant second to Marvel after all these years. Truth of the matter is that DC is around 30% of Diamond's comic business, and Diamond doesn't just deal in comics, insinuating that Diamond is very healthy and solvent overall, and that they really need DC. Well, if that were true, he wouldn't be penning this article. 
Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And and it's weird to see a guy representing a company that's that's very existence came from, you know, splitting from Marvel. Now suddenly, uh, you know, wanting to call out how successful Marvel is at the expense of DC. It's it's a it's a very weird statement. And I mean, look, uh, Image as a company should be focused on their own business success and not worrying so much about what DC is doing. I mean, the, the reality is Image is sitting here. They don't have Walking Dead anymore. Saga is on constant hiatus. Wicked the Divine is gone. They're going to need some more big marquee titles uh, in their roster. They don't have them right now. So rather than throwing shade at DC and, and doing what they're doing, you know, focus on your own business because you could quickly become a distant third. And in some metrics, you could say that sometimes they aren't a third because if you look at units sold per, per SKU offered or new comic offered, there are times when some of those lower publishers outsell Image Comics or per units offered as far as units. And DC a lot of times outsells Marvel. If you look at new comics offered and units sold, they will, they will outsell them on a per uh, comic basis. So it's not like DC is being reamed. It's just that Marvel floods the market so much that it, make it makes it look like they're destroying everybody when it's not quite the case. No, it's it's not. I mean, Marvel's definitely the leader. But again, I, I mean, why Eric Stevenson needs to point that out just comes across as petty. Like they're taking swipes at DC for no reason. It's extremely weird for image of all people to be pointing that out. And, and again, they, they need to mind their own business and, and really focus on selling comics and getting things going. All that's come about with this is it's another kind of hollow statement. Supporting Diamond. I mean, that's nice, I guess. Maybe Jeppy will buy you a beer next time he sees you. Cool. But you've also made it very uncomfortable for a lot of creators that now work for both companies. You put them in an awkward position where people at DC are going to wonder why they're you know, contributing with Image. And you've got people at Image who are now wondering why they're contributing to DC. It's just, it's, that's not creator friendly. That's the opposite of what the company was supposed to be doing. Now, the entire uh, letter wasn't as uh, unselfware. Like I said, here at the end, he says, nothing more contrived than negligent behavior and a deep lack of business acumen and poor internal leadership. This might be forgivable from a smaller company with fewer resources and less history in the market. Many who accused the image founders of leaving Marvel and setting up their own company out of self-interest and given how incredibly successful image was in the beginning, they could have easily just produced their own comics and left, left it at that. Now, here's, here's something pretty interesting because if you talk to a lot of creators, Image is a very important for the industry. It gives creators an outlet for original properties and things like this. But their terms, as far as their payouts and things like this, are abysmal. If you aren't one of the executives at Image, your stuff really isn't promoted unless you're one of the preferred artists. Uh, like maybe um, Ed Brubaker obviously has an exclusive if you're a Scott Snyder coming over. But if you're not one of those big names, your comics almost don't get marketed. You don't get paid after the first issue unless your books get released in trade. So you could be waiting upwards of six to 12 months, depending how often your periodic is actually released and how long it takes for your, your trade to actually be distributed to actually get a second paycheck in a lot of cases. If you're not one of the executives at, at Image, who I have been told specifically have higher annual salaries than a lot or most of the executives at DC and Marvel Sure. No, and 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 granted, they they took some risks. They made a company. They they've created this environment, and and if that's what the market will bear for them, more power to them. I mean, if that's, if they, I think they they did some things to put themselves in a position to get this salary, and I'm not going to begrudge them that uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I just find it peculiar that at a time when you know there's a lot of rethinking going on, there's a lot of changes that are happening to the industry why pick a fight now is kind of my underlying statement. Why, why, how does this help your business? How does this help you succeed? How does this help you find the next walking dead, the next saga? How does it improve things? Or are you just kicking a bunch of mud up in the air because you're, you're throwing kind of a weird tantrum uh, because DC has some other options. I, I mean, when I read this stuff and when I see Marvel's uh, just ridiculously stupid variant cover, I, I just think, it, it smells like fear to me. It smells like companies that are worried that DC stumbling across a better outlet for comics, that they're going to get them more places and they're going to take a number one spot. And this is just a tantrum. That's how it comes across. If that's not what it intends, they are missing the mark. They have every right to be scared. If, if we just look at things at the bare bones of facts, when the shutdown happened within two weeks, Diamond had to, to adjust their payouts 
They had to furlough a bunch of employees. Not exactly the, the best scenario you would expect from a, a financially robust company. Obviously, they they uh, aren't flush with cash right now. They just lost a third, uh, you know, over a yearly period, a third of their their comic sales for the year. And DC legitimately only has everything interesting coming out for the next six six to eight weeks for the most part. There there's some things here and there, ones and twos. Diamond is definitely uh, on the precipice or vulnerable right now to very bad things happening to them financially as far as maybe not being able to make any payments or even maybe shutting down. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's a risk. I, I think that they've got to now put a lot of faith into a smaller pool of people. I think just like uh, in many ways, DC is looking at this saying diversification in where our comics are going is a smart thing for us. It, you know, Diamond should be thinking about diversification of the incoming money is what we need. And, and one of the big pillars of that that picture is now gone so it, it's a it's a scary time i think there had that you know if, if people want to shout and scream for a little while because that's what the entire country is doing about a lot of things um cool let's get that out of your system and then we got to get to building what do we want to come out of this uh if you're diamond how are you going to strengthen your business how are you going to do it is how you're going to do it. i mean the, the number one publisher in the country is saying the way we're going to do it is by fucking stupid day glow covers that's how they're going to do it so that's their big idea. Diamond, what do you got? Uh, if Eric's idea is to write an angry letter um, and get some clapbacks, okay. But what is actually going to sell books? Well, that is a very good question. That is to be determined, obviously. I expect more information on the fallout and everything and fully expect to be talking about this on Saturday. Hopefully, you'll be able to join us on the Comics Aficionados. Perch, I really appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. A little bit saltier today, so sorry about that. <laughs> it's a salty week. <laughs>